Uh, can we talk a little bit about broad mites? Sure. Great. So uh, what, what can you tell me about broad mites? I know for a while there, they were like the latest spider mite is in they were everyone was diagnosing all plant problems as being broad mites. Yes. And in fact, I just saw some um, hemp images that, you know, it was like broad mite, broad mite, but it's not, we're pretty sure it's actually herbicide damage. Um, mm. And for outdoor production, people have to remember, um, you know, spray drift is an issue and herbicides drift. We even had it at my house this year. The farm field up back had sprayed an herbicide and it damaged all our tomatoes. And we had... Uh, herbicide damage on our tomatoes, which look like broad mite damage because I got all excited thinking, yes, we've got broad mites. I can take pictures and videos. And it turned out to be herbicide damage. So I was really disappointed. So but, before we talk about the actual uh, life cycle and identification for a broad mite, what are we looking for in a plant in terms of damage? I've always associated with sort of like, and, and correct me because I'm probably wrong, but uh, like Twisted new green growth that's a little bit lighter than it should be in color. Um, well, on if you're speaking to cannabis, yeah. yeah, cannabis actually can have a really high level of broad mites on it before you see damage. Um, you know, I deal with this in ornamentals and vegetables too, and you just get a few broad mites feeding on an impatient, and the leaf is completely gnarled and destroyed. Uh, cannabis actually handles this pest quite well, not that you want it, and typically people don't realize they have it until they do have really high numbers, and that's when you see that slightly distorted growth, a little discoloration. You walk by, and it's just like, eh, it just doesn't quite look right. Then you put it under your scope, and you're like, holy crap you know, and then you know you have them. And being this is a very, what we call cosmopolitan pest, being it's, it's probably in every local garden center coming from every major greenhouse uh, because it, it's just been a really bad pest the last few years. Um, luckily, before it hit cannabis, we'd been working on it a lot in ornamentals and we've had a lot of trials and tests and things we did and we found out um, products like the Suff Oil X work extremely well on it. Um, and that in combination with the predatory mite cucumeris. And so for a lot of ornamentals now, if it's if it's an ornamental that we know can get it, we just treat them with cucumeris. We just do it um, as a preventative. And it's basically stopped the problem in ornamentals. Hmm. So uh, basically what you'd want to do then you're saying is treat the plant early on with something like a Suffoil X to knock back the populations and then yes. follow up with an application of the cucumeris. Yeah, and I would say cucumeris are so inexpensive. I mean, you know, they're just like a bread and butter product. Um, it's easy to get. Again, price is low on it. And cucumeris, being that we know it does really good on broad mite, it will also feed on first instar western flower thrips and a few other thrip species. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, it will snack on spider mite eggs because this is something that's been very interesting. Um, New Guinea impatiens, we used to have a lot of spider mite problems on. Uh, in addition to thrips problems and broad mites. Once we went to using the cucumeris program, we don't have spider mite issues anymore on the New Guineas. And we think that the cucumeris are stopping it before it gets started. I would never recommend cucumeris to treat for spider mites if you have a population already. But if there's just one egg here or there and the cucumeris find it, there's a chance they're going to just feed on it. But again, do not use cucumeris as a control. Don't email me saying, hey, I heard you say use cucumeris to control spider mites. That is not what I said. So when we're targeting broad mites, we're seeing these side benefits of other things that will feed on and can stop problems before they start. Okay. So now, I, I was just going to say, if you're a cannabis grower and you don't have cucumeris in your program, you're crazy. All right. So if we're talking about identifying broad mites, I, they're quite small. Very small. And so they're really hard to see. You do need a microscope. I couldn't see them with a jeweler's loop myself. Um, what, what identifying characteristics and what do, you, what do we need as tools in the garden uh, for people to be able to really identify them? Well, 60x magnification is generally where you need to be around. And this is where, again, I love my Dynalite because my eyes are 
terrible. I'm, I have old lady eyeballs now. Um, and I like to be able to take leaves and sit with my computer with my data light. So it's this giant big screen. Um, and then I can, you know, scan over the leaf surfaces with the data light and, and then be able to see things close up and then take pictures if need be. Um, well, one, I use them for my classes, but for my growers, they can take pictures and then send them to me if they don't see what something is. But the broad mites, um, they tend to be a little clearer um, on their bodies. And the, the key diagnostic feature we look for are their eggs because they've got little white dots all over their eggs where spider mite eggs are larger and they're perfectly round. Uh, where these, if you look, they almost remind me of like golf ball dimples in a way. They're very distinctive eggs. Um, and if you see those, then we know um, that that's a broad mite egg. The other thing broad mites do is the males will pick up and carry the females around. So if you see a mite running by and then there's a female attached to it, or it looks like two are running along, then that's broad mite also. Okay. And uh, so what we're doing is we're sampling off of a leaf that's probably new growth and then uh, taking that, flipping it over, and, and using the dino light or a stronger yeah. group or something. And, and, and now, uh, I haven't, it's, it's over there. It's packed to go for my workshop for Saturday. The new dino light I got is uh, wireless. And so you can have your laptop or your phone setting somewhere, you know, a bit away, and you don't have to worry about the cable or cord, and you're able to manipulate the dino light a bit easier. Um, to be able to get into the plant canopy and everything if you don't want to cut leaves off. Um, so, yeah. I'm, That's cool. Well, yeah, they're, uh, they're just expensive. I, I love I buying. But, uh, I know. Yeah. Well, but you got to remember, I'm, I'm, diff I, this is, I'm in a different job than you are. And, oh, for sure. I have a very expensive phase contrast microscope that would be overkill for any grower. You know, I get it. Yeah. So you have to have the right tools for what you're doing. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Uh, in terms of broad mites, you mentioned cucumeris, you mentioned Suffoil X. I will say if you are under warmer growing conditions, which often if you're in an, if you're in an indoor grow, you're not, there is the option of using the predatory mite Swirsky. Um, it's a lot more expensive. Um, I always say start with cucumeris and if you can get it to work, you can save a ton of money. If not, you can move into Swirsky, but generally Swirsky is, is for um, a bit warmer of temperatures, or if you're fighting whitefly at the same time that you're fighting broad mites, um, because Swirsky will also feed on whitefly eggs. Okay, and uh, are there any other oil-based options or uh, pesticidal sprays that you can use that you're aware of for broad mites besides stuff oil X? Well, I have a very good comfort zone with that product because I have had lots of my growers using it. We haven't had any problems with it and we know it works. I mean, there are lots of other oils, um, you know, a lot of the plant botanical based ones, um, but they get very expensive and there needs to be testing to prove they work as well. I know there um, has been some testing going on comparing the different oils and the oils do not all work the same. I, I don't want to talk about somebody else's research because he's going to publish it, but the oils do not work the same. There's different particle sizes. And I know one of the things that I'm getting a lot of people are like, well, stuff oil X, it's a petroleum product. We're not going to use it. Yeah. So here's my argument back. Fine. If you want to use things like plant botanical oils, to make those botanical oils, how much carbon footprinting and how much petroleum has to go in to growing all those, harvesting all that, to process it, to make a small batch. I bet you if you actually looked at the carbon, the, the, the fossil fuel inputs to produce those products, it's more than just using a jug of the stuff oil. Because you think about how much of these plants, I mean, how much lavender, how much rosemary, how much all that you have to grow to produce these oils. It's a lot of input and a lot of work to harvest it and, and do all that stuff too. So just saying that, you know, when you're looking at, you know, a 1% spray rate on some of these products, um, and it's weird because, you know, people are okay with driving their cars and putting gasoline in it, mm -hmm. but then they've got this weird thing about using stuff oil X. Yeah, I have heard that. So if we're, if we're taking, you know, we're starting early on in propagation Yep. We're uh, dipping our clones or spraying them with the stuff oil and then introducing 
the cucumeris, hopefully to the crop fairly early on, like you said. Yep. Uh, is that within like a few days, a week? Um, of as the, soon the as, spray? I mean, it's uh, right that same day. I mean, the next day. Don't oh, wow. Okay. Treat. Okay. And then um, how often should we be introducing cucumeris? Because I assume if there's not enough food, they'll die off and then. Yes. Well, and this is the other thing that, you know, ornamentals and vegetable guys have kind of accepted. Instead of spraying every week or every two weeks, they're releasing bugs every week or two weeks. You're not building a population in there because, as you said, there's not enough food. So you just have to do constant introductions. And this is all going to depend on the rates, your pressure. I mean, and this is why you got to work with somebody um, that can help you put these programs together because – as I'm working around North America, you know, people's pressures are different in different parts of the country. And, you know, if, if you're in a very cold climate and it's midwinter and, you know, you get your spider mites or broad mite cleaned up, you might not have to re, you know, might not have to introduce anything else for the rest of this, that, that until, you know, it warms up outside. If you're in warmer climates and, you know, Vegas, uh, Arizona, Florida, you know, things like that, you're going to have constant pressures coming in. And so, you know, that you're more likely going to have to stay on a solid program. Okay. And then I guess my last question about broad mites would be what happens when you're in flower and you notice that you have it? Are you, are you, are you just screwed at that point? It sounds like, cause you're not spraying stuff oil X. I can tell no, you. No, you're not. Um, first of all, you, you should, you know, smack yourself in the back of your head for <laughs> letting it get to that point because they didn't just show up. They've been there for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, and this is why, again, I just, you've got to be preventative about this stuff. Um, again, the ornamental and vegetable eyes have gotten it. You know, in propagation, they just treat everything like they're going to get problems. You can't wait. And, I mean, you just can't get enough cucumeris out or Swirsky out in, in flower onto the plant because – the application methods would just be very difficult. You'd end up with so much carrier on the plant. The sachets will not release fast enough for what you need. It's just, you, 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 it's a problem. 